So in this case, we are going to consider the classification of wind turbines as we referred uh, from the introduction, as we are working with the wind turbines, we do understand the wind electricity generation. So the turbines which are used on the generation of that wind electricity, these are the types of wind turbines. So wind turbines can be given or can be classified in two main types based on their axis of rotation. That is the horizontal axis, wind turbines, and the vertical axis, wind turbines. So we can classify them, we can categorize them in two main types based on the axis of rotation. So in your theory part, uh, the basic part, that is the horizontal axis, wind turbines, right, can be uh, formulated in this manner. So that is when we are given according to the axis of what rotation horizontal. On a horizontal axis wind turbine, the wind direction acts parallel to the axis of rotation. That is the wind direction acts parallel to the axis of rotation. If we are to consider, uh, right, I need uh, something that we can... Uh, use all right i think let us just go down all right i wanted us to see a similar a sketch of what uh represents that one but uh, in this case let's say we have got uh, our axis of rotation let's say being what the x axis let's say we are considering x axis as our axis of what rotation the wind direction is acting parallel to the axis of rotation so when it is parallel it means we are maintaining same distance so a parallel line to the x axis will be like this so when we see such consideration that the axis of rotation is given then the wind speed will be parallel to that. That's a horizontal axis wind turbine. That's the consideration of the horizontal axis wind turbine. As that rotation is happening, they will be parallel. So uh, what is important, uh, do not worry, because the issue of the diagrams uh, yes, they can just give a specific illustration where maybe you just need to name some certain parts of that diagram, but do not worry, the major part, we are going to see it uh, on the calculations, how questions can be given. But as part of the theory, you need to understand uh, this part. All right. So on the diagram, uh, we are going to have some of the components which are important for us to understand. Which one? The knuckle, which contains the rotor shaft, the gearbox, the brake, and generator as it is situated at the top of the tower. Then we also have the brake, which stops or slows the rotation during extreme wind speeds to avoid what structural damage the structural damage that can happen can be avoided by the use of the brake as it holds the turbine for maintenance or emergencies to protect workers and equipment we also have the gearbox as the component 
which is to increase the rotational speed. The major part is to increase the rotational speed as it conveys the low speed rotation of the turbine blades of 10 to 20 revs per minute into a higher speed of 1,500 to 1,800 revs per minute required by the generator to produce electricity. So the gearbox, we have to increase. They can ask those things um, as part of the theory part. They can just want you to name the parts and list the, the function of each and every part. We also have the blend, which are in a sharp and aerophil, which uses the concept of lift as opposed to drag. All right. So it's unfortunate that uh, some of the diagrams, I did not put them so that you can properly see. But as you consider some of the sources that you have or even your internet, just try to uh, look out. Uh, onto the illustration of the horizontal axis wind turbine as a diagram and the components that are there as we consider issue of the turbine. So that is the major part that we are going to have on the blades, which are three blades are normally used as increasing the number of blades will affect the aerofuel lift, less than three blades can reduce the efficiency. So that is the major part. Then we also have the yaw control mechanism, which turns the nagli horizontal so that it faces the wind. We also have the generator, which must rotate at 3,000 revs per minute to generate electricity at 50 hertz. So a gearbox is used to increase the output speed. Uh, the issue of the output uh, speed, we talked about this, the gearbox before. Remember, we said we want uh, the speed to be increased so that we can be able to produce electricity uh, that is uh, we must have a certain speed that a generator needs so the generator must rotate at this speed 3000 revs per minute to generate electricity remember our frequency guys for electricity what 50 hertz uh, 60 but mostly we work with what the 50 so in this case we are going to have what 50 hertz on the other side, we have the vertical axis wind turbines. So the vertical axis wind turbines, they have blades that are oriented vertically, allowing them to capture wind from any direction without needing to be adjusted. The blades are oriented vertically. So this design makes them suitable for urban environments and smaller installations as they can be placed closer to the ground, facilitating easier maintenance. So that's an advantage on its own. That's an advantage on its own. So on a vertical axis wind turbine, the wind direction acts this time perpendicular to the axis of rotation as we are given uh, from this figure to be a perpendicular. Remember, in the previous case of the horizontal, it was parallel to the axis. This time when it is perpendicular, it means the wind direction will be like this. So that they will be at 90 degrees to the axis of rotation. That is the major part. These turbines 
can be used in urban areas because of their compact size and low noise. So we can use them in what? Urban areas. They take up less space than their horizontal counterparts and can operate in lower wind speed locations. That is an advantage there. However, they can generate only small amounts of electrical power, which becomes a disadvantage because we have lesser or smaller amount of electrical power. But if we consider what we had when we're dealing with the horizontal axis wind turbine, the output will be more because of what? The gearbox concept, which increases the rotational speed. So we have a, an advantage when you're dealing with, in terms of the output there, when, when dealing with the horizontal uh, compared to when we are dealing with the vertical because there we have got small amount of electrical power at the end. So as part of your theory, as you are doing the revisions, just make sure you go through your textbook as well. Uh, and some of the diagrams from the internet, just try to understand the basics of how questions are given as an individual. Try to understand these questions. Revise as many questions as you can uh, till we meet again.